Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Real United States. I'm your host Paul Campbell and behind the camera as always is our camera operator and my wife Beverly Campbell. We're here in Turkey Run Park. It's on the George Washington Parkway right on the southwest edge of Washington DC. And then the District of Columbia actually you see in the uh, far side in the background behind me on the far side of this is the Potomac River. Now I have a friend that asked me about uh, the Potomac River and what it was like further upstream. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to explain why the city of Washington DC and where the, the Capitol Mall and the White House, why they are where they are. Now the Potomac River is a large river from that area by the White House further downstream. And in the development of our nation in the 1700s it was a major navigated artery, good means of transportation. From that point, just shortly after, however, the water begins to get very shallow. Now we're about three miles upstream from where you would cross the bridge to go over by the Lincoln Memorial, downtown Washington, D.C., near the White House and the Capitol building. And in just three miles, you can see that the river has just about disappeared. It's very shallow, there's rapids here running over the rocks, um, there's actually some little island-like affairs out in the middle of the river. It's not navigable in a large vessel. Certainly this would be navigable in a canoe or a small boat, but in the sorts of ships that would have come up the Potomac from the Chesapeake Bay in the day to bring supplies, to bring people, all of that would have been way too big and had too much draft to be able to come any further up the river than they did. So that was about the furthest upstream that you could navigate with the ships of the day. That is very probably why Washington sits where it does today. Now I'm not a historian, I don't really know, but from a practical point of view it is the end of the line for navigation on the Potomac River. Now the river still further up is quite shallow. I mean it's not all rocky but it is quite shallow and there are some rapids so it's relatively shallow. Again, not something that's going to be navigable by a sailing ship of the 1700s. So I hope that answers my friend's question. Uh, Mike, how you doing? Um, it's a relatively nice day although it's kind of overcast. I wish we had better light for doing this. But this is on the hillside across the Potomac, on the south side of the Potomac. And uh, you can see we got quite a beautiful view, although the, the leaves are gone, which are fortunate for us because it's a very densely wooded area here in the park. And uh, the water largely can't be more than two or three feet deep in most of the places here. So there's no way to pass with anything other than a very small boat. And in the day, of course, those would have been hand-powered rowboats. There were no engines or powers in the 1700s, so it would have been very difficult for this to be anything other than a portage with a canoe, where you would actually take the canoe out, walk around these rapids, and then put it back in and go further up. So I hope you've enjoyed this short episode on the upper reaches of the Potomac River just outside of Washington, D.C. We hope you'll pick, subscribe, and join us for future episodes. Come along for the adventure. We love having you with us. If you got questions or comments, you just want to say hi, drop it in the comment section below. I love hearing from all of you. We try to get back to everybody we can as soon as possible. And as always, thank you for watching.